Hey everybody, I want to welcome you back to the channel State of Charge, where we talk about solar power, web technology, and life stories. Now in today's video, we're going to be extending the light sail series, and we are going to be talking about how to add a load balancer to your instances so that when traffic increases, the load balancer is going to move the traffic and spread it out over the number of instances that you have available and assigned to that load balancer. So if this is something that you're interested in, please like, subscribe, hit that bell so you're getting notified. Share the channel with others that you think might like it and let's do this together. So let's dive right in to light sale and load balancing. All right, to get things started, I am on the dashboard of my light sale account. And as you can see here, I have four instances that are up and running. The SOC, that is my main State of Charge website. You can visit that at stateofcharge.tv if you would like. And then the other three are three instances that I have assigned to a load balancer. Now these are instances that are exactly the same. They're a WordPress install and I have the domain name pointing to the load balancer. We'll go over that step next in just a minute on uh, updating your DNS and doing your HTTP certificate to the load balancer. So that's coming up next. So you're gonna wanna watch that because it is a required step. Right now I'm just showing you my basic instance setup. So we have man one, man two, man three. It's also very important to understand that I have these in different availability zones. So this one is in zone C, this one here is in zone A, and this one here is in zone B. So this is um, significant because if any of the zones fail at the data center, the load balancer is gonna recognize that that instance is no longer available, and then it's gonna load balance between the other two uh, that are available. Uh, similar, if you wanna do an upgrade to one, and then take it down or do a repair and take it down, the load balancer is gonna understand that, hey, I only have two of the three um, instances available so let's load balance the load over those instances evenly and accordingly so just wanting you to see that so I have all of these they're just set up as a basic WordPress instance let's go over to the networking tab here on uh, and let's look at the load balancer so when we click on this and manage the load balancer see there you can see that I have these three instances attached to it. Now at any point in time I could come in here and I can detach an instance to that load balancer and then it's only going to be able to load balance between the two available instances. And so that's that's very nice to have um, and this is this is really the basic configuration, the basic setup of the load balancer configuration. You set up some instances and you set up a load balancer and then you set up DNS. And all three of those work together. The DNS will point to the load balancer, then the load balancer will distribute the traffic between up to two, you need two, um, so that you're balancing the load, right? Um, two or more instances, and that can fluctuate. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do the DNS. Let's take a look at how we do the HTTPS digital certificate so that your traffic is secure. And then at the end of the video, you're gonna watch this because this is really pretty cool. You're gonna wanna see how when I take an instance down, what happens, and then we're going to build another instance and attach it, and we're gonna go from there as well. We also need to assign a database server so that all three of the instances are pulling data off of one database. You can't have this instance running its own database, this instance running its own database, and this instance over here running its own database, because then they'll get out of sync. All three instances need to be attached to a database server. So we're not gonna get into too much detail on that one because that is a whole other video on how to create a separate um, database server and then attach the instances to that. And so we'll be doing a video on that. So for the sake of this video, it's just really talking about the load balancing and how all that works together. All right, I know we're not gonna to talk too much about the database, but it's very important to realize that before you get a successful load balancing installed and working, you do need to have your databases connected to an external database. So I'm just briefly gonna show you what that looks like here in the dashboard and show you what it looks like on the configuration file within WordPress, and that is going to be that. So let's go in here and in the dashboard, we're gonna look at databases 
and I have a MySQL database right here and when you hit manage on that it's going to give you the information that you need to connect your database string in your configuration file in WordPress. Hopefully I have this information obfuscated so that you can't see it but you are going to be able to get your endpoint for your database which is going to be right here you're going to paste that into your config file you have your db username which is going to be right here and then you can do a show and hide on your password and you can see your password there so obviously for security purposes i'm not going to show that on screen but this is where you're going to get that information so now let's go ahead and take a look at where you're going to put this information into your config file for WordPress. So I'm going to open up Transmit and I'm going to connect to my server here. All right, I'm connected to the server here and let's go ahead and look at the config file. And in the config file, here is where you're going to put your password that was assigned in LightSail. Here's where you're going to put the endpoint. Again, that was assigned by LightSail. And then you have your database user and your database name. So all of those things are going to be configured in. So when you create and you spin up new instances, they're all using the same config file right here and they're all pointing to the same database. So I know this is really quick, this is down and dirty. I'll do another video on actually how to spin up a LightSail um, MySQL database and how to use the MySQL um, tool to actually connect to that database, import it and export it, whole other video. So this is uh, assuming that you've got this done, okay? All right, in this portion of the video, I'm gonna go over how we're gonna set up the DNS uh, for a domain name. So I'm logged into my GoDaddy account here and I'm gonna be changing the name servers of this domain. So back over here on my LightSail dashboard, I'm gonna go into the networking tab and create DNS zone. So let's go ahead and enter a domain name. And this is a domain that I have and I can come up here and I'm going to create that DNS zone and that's going to put this into the dashboard and as you can see it's going to give me some name servers that I'm going to want to use. So let's just go ahead and copy these name servers over here at the DNS management tool from GoDaddy. Let's paste in those name servers from Amazon that they've provided for us and let's get each one of these into those blocks in those form fields there and be careful when you're copying and pasting not to get any spaces in there. Um, we want to make sure we're just getting the name server addresses there um, without any other characters. And let's go ahead and see if we can save this. We've got all four. We're using those name servers and let's hit save. Okay. Yes, we want to continue. Let's update those name servers. And now those name servers um, are pointing to the Amazon DNS zone that we are going to create. Now we need to do this to set up a digital certificate. Now I'm not going to be doing the load balancing with this domain because as you see over here in our networking, I already have the load balancer. Now let's click on here to manage that. And you'll see I have my other uh, servers that I'm running, those other instances running on this load balancer. I'm just going through this DNS process just so that you can see what it looks like and what you're going to have to do because I already have this one configured. What I like to do is go to MX Toolbox and I like to get um, a DNS lookup here. Let's just go ahead and do that. I like to do a DNS lookup here just to see if um, it has routed and so yes so our hosting provider is Amazon route 3 and so we are seeing that that domain is now routing to Amazon so what we can begin to do now is start setting up the certificate the secure certificate so let's go back over here to our networking tab all right, so under the DNS uh, zone for Timeless Clothing, what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and manage it and let's add some records. We're gonna add an A record, 
This first one is just going to be the ampersand and it's going to resolve to the load balancer. Let's go ahead and add that. We're gonna add one more. This is gonna be an A record and this is gonna be www and this one's also gonna resolve to the load balancer and we will add that. So now that we have those two records added to the zone file, we just need to let that propagate for a little while. And once that's done, we can go ahead and set the certificate for this domain so that HTTPS traffic is being routed correctly to the load balancer. So let's do that next. All right, now that we have the DNS configured and we've shown that it's pointing to Amazon, what we need to do is we need to route the traffic. So any traffic coming into the load balancer needs to be done on HTTP. Now in order to do that, we need to go to the networking tab and we need to scroll down here to the load balancer. Let's manage that. And we are going to be routing um, inbound traffic. So we wanna make sure that we are doing it on HTTP as well as HTTPS because the instances are behind the load balancer, the traffic from the load balancer to the instances is only HTTP on port 80. But the traffic from the viewer to the load balancer is HTTPS. So we're making this certificate to go from the user's computer directly to the load balancer. What's behind the load balancer, because it's internal uh, to the network there, it can be HTTP on port 80 because there's no public traffic there. What we want to do now is make a new certificate for the domain that we just added. And we are going to go ahead and hit create there. Now, because we've set the DNS to Amazon, it's going to go ahead and do its internal checks and we should be able to get the digital certificate for this domain name fairly quickly and fairly easily. Now, if you're managing your own DNS, this might take a little bit of time and you might have to then validate it through other mechanisms, whether it's through a phone call or an email uh, or some other mechanisms, whichever digital uh, certificate provider um, or whichever domain provider that you're using. All right, so we need to validate the domain name. So we need to create this C name in the zone file that we've just created in Amazon. So because the domain is pointing to Amazon LightCell, we can just go to the networking tab and enter in the C name information. So let's go ahead and type this in. Let's go over to our other tab that I've got. So I've got two tabs open here and let's manage this zone file. Let's add a re uh, C record and we are going to paste this portion in right there and that is then going to resolve here and let's get that one in place and let's see how long it takes now for that to resolve so that we can get the digital certificate in place all right so let's look at the details here so this digital certificate for timeless clothing actually has been validated and it took about five minutes to do that and so obviously you didn't see all of that but here looking at the screen um, we were able to validate this and and just fine so um, that's that's great so now your traffic if you're going to use this domain name or a domain name that you want to assign point those to the amazon name servers you're going to add the A records to the load balancer, and then you're going to validate the certificate um, so that you have HTTP traffic. So that needs to be done before you're going to be able to um, assign a domain name correctly so that your traffic to your load balancer is secure for your users. And then we can go ahead and start adding the instances to the load balancer, and let's do that now. All right, let's get into some fun stuff here. So as you can see, I have three instances, uh, man one, man two, and man three. They're all assigned and attached to the load balancer. And so let's go ahead and go to that site. Um, my son and I are big Star Wars fans, and so I just set up a really simple domain called mandalorian.com. And all it is is three images that are rotating through a slider right now that I, that I grabbed. 
And so really this is all that it is and it's just for demonstration purposes for this video and for me to educate some of my clients as I do this for them. So very simple website, it's just a three image slider but it is attached to three instances. And so let's go ahead and let's come over here and let's turn off this instance and let's go ahead and stop that. That'll take a while. So we're gonna pause the video until that's fully stopped. Okay, as you can see that man three is completely stopped. And so right now I only have two instances that are running off of the load balancer. Now what you can do is you can come over here to networking you can click on load balancer and hit manage and you can look at the metrics and you can see that we went from three instances just now to two okay so we know that two instances are running now we don't know which instance i am viewing the website on so what i like to do at this point is let's come back to my instances here and let's stop instance man two so i'm going to go ahead and stop that one now so let's assume that some catastrophic event has happened and both of the availability zones um, have gone out or those servers are down. So now my website essentially is running off of one instance through the load balancer. So let's go ahead and give this a moment to stop. And then I'm gonna show you what's really fun about this. All right, here on the dashboard, as you can see, this instance is stopped and this instance is stopped. So now when I come back over here and I view the website and we reload that, the load balancer is gonna recognize that two of my three instances are no longer running. So I'm only gonna allow traffic to run off of this one instance. And so I, obviously because I've shut the other two down when I'm looking at the site now and I do a refresh here, it loads. So we know that it's only coming from traffic off of this load balancer right here and we can show that I'm gonna go ahead and stop this third one as well so that you can see that this is actually taking place so let's give that a minute to stop all right you can see here on the dashboard that all three instances to this load balancer that are assigned to my load balancer are completely stopped they are not running for whatever reason Obviously, for the case of the video, we manually stopped them. But in a real world situation, for whatever reason, one server, two servers, three servers failed. And so when we go to the website, we should get a gateway error now because the load balancer has nothing to draw from. So let's see what happens. We go to the domain here. Let's go ahead and refresh. Yeah, see, we're getting a 503 service temporarily unavailable. That's because all three instances are shut down. So let's go ahead and come back to the light sail dashboard and let's turn one of them back on. Let's just randomly, let's choose two. So let's go ahead and get that one and let's start that one back up. This does take a little bit of time, three or four minutes. So we're gonna pause the video again and we're, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna look and see um, that we have man two up and running and we should be able to go to the website and see it running uh, off of that instance. All right, so we see here on the dashboard that man two is running where man three and man one are not. So when we go to mandalorian.com and we reload it, we know now that this is running and being delivered and served from instance man two. Okay, so let's just do this one more time. Let's turn man three on and let's let that one start and let's turn man two off and we'll stop that one so when we come back in a minute or two after both of these shut down and start back up uh, we're going to see that the load balancer is going to automatically recognize that and serve the traffic then off of man three so i'm just doing this to show you guys that this does work it not only load balances but when you have a failure it's going to route the traffic accordingly to the available instances all right, so here we can see that man three is running. We have man one stopped and we have man two stopped. So when we come over here on the tab and we refresh the page, we know that that is being served off of man three. So what I'm gonna do now is let's just get all of these back up. Let's get man one and man two. Let's start those. So we see that that uh, restart is pending and those will come back up. And at that point, we'll have all three of them running and we know that then the load balancer is going to evenly distribute the traffic from um, man one, man two, and man three 
accordingly. All right, so now that we've refreshed the screen one more time, we see that all three instances are up and running. And when we go over here to the networking tab again, and we look at load balancer, and we're gonna manage that, we can see that it's still attaching to those because it is taking a little bit of time to start those up. Sometimes it can take a minute, sometimes it can take two or three minutes. Just, so you wanna be mindful of that restart process, but it is attaching that because it just recognized that they're coming back online. So as we refresh this, there we go. We can see that it is starting to rebuild that up and that the health check of those instances are passing. And look, all three of them now are attached to the load balancer and the load balancer will be distributing the traffic evenly amongst those three um, light cell instances. So the last thing that we're gonna do here, and I'm gonna show you, which is really, really fun, is we're gonna create a snapshot of one of these instances and then we're going to build a new instance of that snapshot and we're going to assign that instance that we just created to the load balancer. Again, let's take a real life example. You've got a product launch or you've got an upgrade that you're needing to push out to your audience or you're doing a live event and you need to have more robust server capacity for that specific event. With load balancing, you spin up servers, you shut down servers uh, manually with light sail, but you have the ability to do that. And it just meets the demand of real world situations. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna come over here to the home screen and I am going to look at my snaps. Actually, let's go and manage. I always base it off of man one. So let's go ahead and manage that. And let's look at the snapshot here. Um, I do daily snapshots. So yeah, actually we can do that. We'll just use this snapshot right here. And I'm going to create a new instance of that snapshot. And we are going to just keep it there. Let's just call this one man two or man four. And let's go ahead and create that instance completely up and running and that server is ready to go. Um, again, I could probably come to the IP address and, and look at that directly and see if uh, the server is up and running there. All right, so now that we have this server up and running, uh, let's go into the network tab and let's go down to the load balancer here. We're gonna manage that and we're just going to attach another instance. And so let's just attach instance four to that, click attach and it will take a minute to attach that. And once that is done, we'll go into the metrics tab and we will see that we now have four healthy instances assigned to this load balance. So now the traffic is being balanced over a series of four instances. Okay, as we refresh this screen here, we are going to see that we have four instances now assigned to the load balancer and they are all passing the health check. And let's go into the metrics here and you can see that we went from three down to two, down to one, back up to three. And this is being um, analyzed every five minutes. So we just don't see that fourth instance there yet. But if we gave it some time, uh, we would come back and we would see that we would have four instances assigned there in the metrics tab. So that is how you add instances uh, to the load balancer. And again, if you've got a snapshot that is current, and especially since you're running off of an external database, then uh, you should be good to go um, on in that regard and get your servers up and running quickly and spin them up and tear them down when you don't need them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's first, let's just make sure. Okay, so there you go. Now we've got that fourth instance assigned uh, to the load balancer, but I don't need all of these. So let's go over to the home and I'm actually going to terminate man four and I'm going to terminate man two or man three um, because I don't need all of those. This is for demonstration purposes. I would like to keep these other two um, running just so that I have them and I can 
play with them as needed and not go through the setup process if we want to play around with them a little bit more. So I want to thank you for watching today's video on load balancing and how to assign instances and a database to the load balancer and get a configurable, expandable, and shrinkable network that you can use for whatever your applications or whatever your business purposes require. If you'd like any help or any assistance, please reach out. I'd love to do that for you. Please like, subscribe, add some comments down below, and share this video if you thought it was helpful. Take care and have a wonderful day.